And welcome back to our show. My next guest is a popular radio host, a best-selling author, and a longtime marriage and family therapist who's known as the Relationship Doctor. Her new book examines the epidemic of chronic pain. It afflicts over 100 million people in the United States. And it talks about how patients can manage their pain without dangerous long-term drugs. Please welcome the co-author of Living Beyond Pain, Dr. Linda Mental. Linda, great to Hi. have you here. Great to be here. This is a topic that is on fire, Dr. Mental, because people across America have been hearing all about the opioid crisis and the people who are addicted. But there are people in this country, 100 million we just heard, are in pain. That's right. What do they do? I wrote this book with a physician, and we were looking at what are all those people going to do who maybe are rightfully on opioids. Uh, some of them, we know that opioids don't always work with chronic pain, so they needed lots of solutions. So we reviewed all the evidence. We looked at all the research-based approaches to chronic pain and put those in the book and tried to understand a little bit more about helping people what chronic pain is all about. Are there treatments other than pharmaceuticals that can help people with, with real, not imagined, but right. genuine pain. And there are people who hurt every single day that's of right. their lives. That's right, but pain perception is in the brain. And that's one of the things that we talk about a lot in the book. So if you change your thinking, it helps turn down the dial on pain. If you change your emotional state, so if you work on depression or anger or unforgiveness or any type of negative emotion, it turns that dial down. If you work on your stress and you're able to manage stress better, it turns the dial down. And then there are a whole host of other types of treatments. We look at everything from acupuncture to medical marijuana to CBD oils to... Does um, any of that work? The, the data is really still, we need to look at medical marijuana quite a bit. We haven't yeah. had it done well in terms of the research yet. There is some promise maybe with CBD as we look at that, but we have to be very careful because the studies just aren't there. So as we look at all those treatments, we're really saying that a lot of it, the jury is out. Now, acupuncture does seem to work for people. We do advocate in the book something that people don't know about much is osteopathic manipulative treatments. It's called OMT, and it's a form of Osteopathic doctors of osteopathic medicine do it all the time. They work with their hands. And when there are structural problems with pain, they can change that and work with it. They're non-pharmaceutical types of treatments, and they're amazing in terms of how they help people. How did we get so messed up with yeah. opioids? Because, I mean, it's hit every family. It I don't has. know of a single family in That's America right. that hasn't had one or two degrees separation from somebody with an opioid crisis. When, when you're seeing 19-year-olds who are dying, you know, putting on their shoes because they're taking an opioid that's been laced with fentanyl, there have been several stories like that in the news where parents walk into their bedroom in the morning and they find their child overdosed. And so you're right, it's hit every single type of person that you can imagine. You can't pick out the opioid addict when you're yeah. looking at a, you know, the audience. You couldn't right. tell who, who that would be. But it's really been a journey with all of this where it started with some, some research that wasn't really accurate about that opioids are not addictive, which now we know, of course, they are highly addictive. How did that happen? How did the research there get was put a, out there that was so bad? Was, did somebody get paid off? No, it was really a, a small article in the New England Journal of Medicine, which is a very well-respected you know, journal. And it was a small study, and it was taken out of context. And that sometimes happens in medicine. And then Big Pharma got involved in this, and they started developing oxycontin. Cotton, and then they started to pressure the hospitals to be using these medications to treat pain. At one point, the pain became the fifth vital sign, they called it, where mm. doctors were, were told, you have to assess for pain. If somebody is in pain, you need to give them treatment. And doctors were literally told that these are not addictive and they would be okay. So we went from that, where they were basically being passed out like m and Overprescribed, yes. And then suddenly it was, you can't get a prescription right. for an opioid because doctors are scared to death to prescribe it, even for patients who we might be it. terminally ill. It probably won't change their trajectory of their lives a whole lot, but may relieve some pain. Well, you and I talked about it's kind of a pendulum because now there is, there, I think there's really good regulations now for physicians. They've got, we've got all kinds of waivers and other treatments that we can help people get off of these medications and then offer these other alternatives. But it's gonna take a while. And one of the things that people need to understand is that not everybody on an opioid is an addict. Hmm. So there are appropriate uses, like you said, um, when those are regulated, but you need to be, have them regulated and see your physician and make sure that you're being monitored. What scares you the most about people who are in chronic pain and the decisions that they make? Because sometimes they may be, they're so desperate, they hurt so bad. And, and you know, we all know people. 
and you can see it in their face. And these are not whiners or complainers, and That's these right. aren't people who are faking it. They wake up every day. I think one of the biggest fallouts is you can become very depressed when you're in chronic pain and you feel like you don't have any hope. And the good news is, is if you understand how chronic pain works in the brain, you can change the perception of, of pain in your brain. You have to work with your thinking, your beliefs, your emotions, all of that can change the perception of pain and help people. So we can give people a much better quality of life. We can get them up and functioning again and have them enjoy their life again. And I think that's why the book Living Beyond Pain uh, is so valuable. Could be a great Christmas gift, by the that's way, right. for people who are saying, I've got a friend, I've got a relative, and they're in intense pain. Dr. Mental's book, Living Beyond Pain, a holistic approach to manage pain and get your life back, is available now and wherever books are sold. To learn more and to find out all about her other books, her blog, and much more, visit drlindamental.com. Also, follow her on social media platforms at Dr. Linda Mental.